Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this painting tutorial for Necrons. Uh, I thought I'd redo my Necron painting tutorial and paint one of the brand new models uh, for Warhammer 40,000 9th edition, the Indomitus Crusade box set. So in this video I'll be painting up the, the Scorpec Lord, uh, the brand new model for the Indomitus box set. Uh, just had the urge to paint these Necrons uh, up here to match him with the rest of my army. So in this video we'll, we'll cover uh, the basing, guide you through the whole process for that as washes, shades, base colours, highlighting. I'll show you how to do this blade, this neon coloured blade here. Uh, the orb, orbs here with their uh, neon colours as well. You can see all the cables uh, and the brass colour with shading and highlighting for that. It'll all be covered uh, here in this video. So stay tuned. What we'll do, uh, we'll take a look uh, at materials that you'll need for this project. All right, so uh, colours that you'll need then. Um, I'll maybe go through the paints first here. So, uh, Iron Breaker, metallic, it's going to be a standard silver colour. Uh, then, Rune Fang Steel, it's a very sort of bright silver. Uh, Dawnstone, sort of mid grey. Bad and Black. Flash Gits Yellow, use a little bit of that here. Uh, white Scar. Uh, Hash Hut Copper. There's a variety of different brasses and bronze and copper colours that you, uh, you can choose whichever one whichever one you want to use. Uh, Hushak Copper is what I've used throughout my Necron collection so far, so I'll stick with that. Uh, but you can try all different uh, ones, there's different options to go for, it's your own preference. Uh, Warpstone Glow, and then I've got the old Scorpion Green, it's now called Mooked Green, uh, so you'll, you can use that. Uh, Bealtan Green, Wash, or Shade, uh, Seraphim Sepia, uh, Nuln Oil, and then Agrax of Shade. So not too many paints here compared to other factions. And that's the great thing about Necrons. Uh, you can get some great results pretty quick. And if you're not too confident with painting it, perhaps you're new to Warhammer 40,000 or you don't rate yourself too much as a painter, uh, you can get some fantastic results with the Necrons. So for beginners, or for those who are nervous about painting, uh, I'd heartily recommend Necrons. You can get some great results uh, here. And you'll see in this video, uh, the results that you can get very straightforward. It's just follow along step by step. Pause the video, uh, paint what I show you, uh, and then just resume play and just work your way through and follow me along. And I'll guide you through the entire process. Uh, but limited number of paints, which is great. So it's it's going to save you a bit there as well. Uh, but still, plenty of variety going on uh, with this model. So that's the paints that you'll need. Uh, paint paint tutorials that I do. Uh, I like to enjoy painting models but I like to try and get them onto the table as quick as I can um, so I try and develop techniques that save time and are fast enough and effective so you're getting that balance between quickly getting units done and getting nice results uh, so part of that is uh, the way you're going to prime this uh, model here to save yourself loads of time so I introduce the sprays uh, for this darker grey 
that you see here on the rim and to shade the base uh, I actually use uh, Montana Gold and the colour is Stealth Discreet um, and there is a code, it's 7070 uh, quite readily available I uh, Google search for it, there's loads of companies offering these sprays quite a reasonable rate so uh, Montana Gold Stealth for that grey if you find an alternate grey that's sort of a not quite mid grey, it's a bit darker than Dawnstone if you were to compare the two so it's quite hard to find a, a dark grey so that's the one I go for usually but uh, you're welcome to find something that's similar that does the base and then save time painting all that silver and I use Army Painter Plate Mail fantastic stuff and then also to finish the model and uh, to help with the undercoating as well, you'll explain that later on, it's Munitor and Varnish. Uh, so really good stuff from Games Workshop. Uh, I do like this spray, but it's it's small amount, it's just a small uh, spray of it on the model, not too much as you can make it go very glossy. So Munitor and Varnish, really good stuff. Uh, then just uh, brushes, palette and, and all the usual equipment that you need. Uh, PVA glue. Uh, for sticking all the sand and stones to the base uh, not necessarily wood glue uh, you want PVA glue has got a nice flex to it and I'd heartily recommend trying to get hold of PVA glue specifically uh, for sticking the sand and stones onto the base and then talking of sand and stones sand a little bit of stones in this one and then some coarser stuff and larger stones in here so uh, that's for your basic materials uh, that you'll need and then I just const construct the whole model uh, so that's the materials that you'll need so in this case of um, constructing your model I, I stick the whole model onto the base uh, and build the whole thing up uh, and just paint the whole thing in one go so that's the idea uh, but what we'll do now is we'll go on to the initial stages talk about basing uh, and spraying bottle getting it ready for painting all right so uh, preparation first for the model um, so there's some tips I'll give you here they're going to save you tons and tons of time so uh, first thing then uh, I construct the whole model stick them to the base assemble all the parts for this particular one should be able to reach all of it with a brush no problem um, then uh, it's the basing first so the first thing I do is to use a little bit of sandpaper just use that uh, around the rim of the base uh, on, on top here where your sand and stones are going to go just to help it key and just to help it stick better because you want it peeling away at the edges over time so just to roughen up the top surface not not this edge here this smooth edge but on top just if you can't reach all of it just the main bits to catch that edge I run that all the way around uh, just to uh, make that a bit rougher just for the something better for the PVA to stick to. Once that's done, uh, I then take my two types of stones. So my mostly sand, there's some stones in there, but it's mostly sand, fine sand. Just that. Uh, and then stones and smaller gravel. And it's just a case of getting an, old, an older brush, uh, dropping some PVA because it's such a large base. For smaller bases you can drop some PVA on something like a uh, a palette and then add your PVA but something this large I'd, I'd drop some PVA onto uh, the base use an old brush just to move it around nice and even and spread it about the whole thing and when you're ready to go go to larger bases uh, larger stones first and then drop those on top sprinkle them around as many as you want you can drop in a few larger stones but be careful that the stones might drop off when you tap it but um, you can uh, spread those around as much as you wish and then when it's when you're ready when you've got enough stones on there uh, as much or as little as you want then uh, you then put in your finer stuff on I just put the base in flick it over the top move the model around and then just gently tap off the excess then and quite an important bit once you're happy with the basing I then take my thumb uh, and rotate it around the edge just wiping off the excess glue uh, stones and sand because during games and when you pack the models and so on those bits are going to get chipped off and then it's just going to spoil your base it's best now just to wipe that clear so I just simply do that with a with um, my finger or thumb just to wipe that away 
just to tidy up the edge of the base. And then that's pretty much it. Let it dry uh, completely, and then you're ready to go on to the, the undercoating and spray. So this is the bit that's gonna save you tons of time. Imagine having to paint this whole model silver. I mean, it'd take you ages. So to save time, uh, the first thing I spray is use the Montana Gold, Gold Stealth. That's 7070 is the code. Um, I spray around the base. Uh, so spraying from this angle, rotating around, spraying again and again, and then making sure uh, that I spray nice and evenly and a good coat all the way around this outside rim, nice shiny edge, and also all of your stones and ruins uh, with that color as well. Some of it will spray up onto the model, that's no problem. Uh, once that's entirely dry, and I really would emphasize letting that go completely black bone dry, and that can take sort of half a day, uh, even preferably let it go overnight if you can. Uh, and then spray the silver the next day because I, sometimes I've I've sprayed this like a few hours later and it's felt dry uh, and then uh, it's been actually tacky and it's uh, not worked out as good because I've got things stuck to the edge and so on. When it's totally dry, uh, I then use usually a bit of kitchen paper and I tear out. I'll show you how to do it. Usually make a a hole in it like this and then I filter it around the model covering up the base pushing it through to show you on one part so that's entirely covered and then wrap around and then I then spray obviously this will be tucked in and then spray with the silver from up underneath to make sure I catch all the model and then rotate around and that's why I've got the silver fingernails because <laughs> I didn't wear gloves uh, spraying these models up uh, but uh, making sure you cover up all the grey, especially the rim and the edge. You don't want any silver spray flicking onto that. Um, and so uh, make sure that's covered and then spray around. And what happens is you put silver across the whole of the model. It's going to save you so much time. Uh, and then pull the tissue away uh, and your base is kept grey and your edge nice and grey. So you've got two colours going on. Your dark grey, that's all your shading, rim, all done for your basing. Uh, and then the main silver colour, which is your predominant colour here for the Necrons, all done. Great colour to paint other colours on top of, so your fluorescent greens and your bronze will just go into this colour brilliantly. Next stage after that is when you put washes onto your Army Painter Silver, it doesn't key in very well, it can puddle and not blend in very well at all. So then use your Munitorum varnish, uh, so I spray it, so it's your, your varnish here. Take the model and spray it around underneath first to make sure that, that varnish goes up underneath the model to catch the silver there and then spray around the model uh, just a light coat. But that'll mean that when your washes go on they'll sit properly and they'll flow into all the cracks and crevices exactly how they're meant to. If you don't do that I've found that you can you get a, a real sort of surface tension uh, with the silver spray and your washes just look horrid, they don't uh, flow in very well at all. So an easy solution to that is just a light spray uh, of your varnish, Munitorum varnish, and that'll fix that and you're ready to put uh, washes straight onto the silver and it should blend in perfectly. So a bit of preparation, uh, very easy and straightforward and as I said earlier it's going to save you loads and loads of time. That's the key to, to get a step ahead, uh, save loads of time and it means you can get your army paints up quicker and onto the battlefield uh, a lot faster. All right, so preparation's done, everything's dry, ready to go. I Usually I go for the base first of all. Um, so we'll get this, we'll work on this base till it's virtually finished and then just wait for the flock to come right at the very end. So we'll do all the other stages. Bit of work, so there's some ruins here. Some tiny little scarab things moving up, little necron bugs moving up here to do. Some steel bits sticking out of the concrete of the uh, ruins just here. So there's a few bits going on. Yeah, another little one just there. So it's little areas of interest to paint up. So we'll cover all of that now. So first colour, Dawnstone. So we've got a dark, mid-dark grey here. So it's all shaded. So we're going to try and lift the colour on this. You do want to be careful. I've got a new, uh, it's a small dry brush here uh, from Games Workshop. I'm taking Dawnstone. And I'm going to try and raise the colour of this with a highlight. So Dawnstone, I'm going to put it on the palette here just to take off the excess paint and then it's just a case of scrubbing that across the 
sand here. And your, your cracks and crevices will all remain shaded and it will highlight up. You can see it there on camera, just lifting it a tone. And then when it comes to the rocks and the ruins, I'll scrub some out first on the sand to take up most of the colour and then start onto the rocks with a more of a dry brush. And you're just flicking it across and it will naturally catch all the details and highlight those. For you and then leave the cracks and crevices shaded. With the ruins, I'm going to try and get most of it in this grey and just leave the most extreme uh, shaded areas, that darker grey. The little bugs, they're going to go grey for now. We'll pick them out with silver a bit later on. Little scaraby. Maybe baby scarabs. Because <laughs> they're not as big as a regular scarab swarm model. So, I'll just keep going out. Make sure I catch all of this. You find yourself where you, you make a mistake and you flick some grey onto the edge. Just wet your finger quickly and then just rub it off before it has a chance to dry it. And then I don't save any mistakes going on. I'm just watching. You've got a nice little bit of control. This is a dry brush, a small dry brush, a nice chisel end. The bristles are quite stiff, which is good for trying to pick out the highlight here. This is virtually done. Right. What's happening? I mean, I theorised this, but whilst you're doing the base, subconsciously, your brain is looking at the model and getting used to where all the bits are, and it'll make you're just familiarising yourself with the model. As soon as you look at the model, and it's intimidating. Where enough do I start? But uh, just start with the base, and uh, your, your your mind's going to be scanning the model, getting used to the parts that need to be painted, and actually starts to uh, look easier to do. I found that anyway. So there's, there he is. See the base starting to pick out quite nicely. I then um, maybe just damp this a tiny little bit just to get it away from bone dry. Tiny bit of damp now added to this. Very very small, don't overdo it. Then take a white scar. Not washing the brush out here. It's going to semi blend it with the greys. It's an off white. And Cautiously, because I want to over highlight this at the start. Yeah, that's about right. I'm just going to catch the highlight now. And you should see the. Yeah, you can see the difference in that one. Now with the ruins, I'm catching more of the edge as opposed to most of the um, piece of stonework. So, yeah, great control of this brush. I'm just going to scrub along the sand a bit more, and then when this, I feel this is dry enough, I'll catch some stone. Here we go. So I'm catching, it catches nicely. Emphasising the edge of the rubble and the stone here. That's it. See that on camera the way that's been highlighted. A bit more white, blending it in. Something like that. The camera's quite light at the moment just to lighten things up for you, but I'll, I'll maybe turn it down a tiny bit here just to give you more realistic. That's more the kind of result you're looking at. I mean, that's more the correct to the colour that I'm seeing here. It's the tone of it. That's quite quite nice. You can go for an extreme white highlight if you wish. Make sure this is very dry, this one. And I'll just catch the edge of the ruin. I really need to do this. But you can spend a little bit extra time. This is a, a big character model here. So just catch the very extreme tips and edges of any ruins and big stones. Yeah, and I'm happy enough for that. It's come out quite well. So there it is, highlighted up quite nicely. Um, so we'll go on to the next stage. We'll um, pick out some colours now uh, on the base. 
Right, so moving on. Is the Shabti bone add only if you need to paint any skulls and so on on the base, any bones and so on? There isn't in this case, so we'll move on from that one. Uh, but so I would use that for any bones and skulls. Next is Iron Breaker. Um, so just using sort of a, a this is a size one artist opus brush here. It doesn't really matter as long as you've got control over uh, the brush and a nice tip on it. Then I'm looking to paint all the silver bits on the base. So there's some little bits of uh, steel reinforcement for this uh, building here. Bits sticking out, so I'll catch those. Just paint them. And then there's, uh, there's another one just there. Yeah, and you can use this for any abandoned weapons and uh, as a good base colour for any uh, armour and so on that's left on the battlefield here, but they're on the base. So there's these little scarabs. I'm just going to paint those in silver. And again, it's gr nice light grey these are now, so they're easy to pick out. Just one coat will do. There's one just coming up out of the ground. And there's one just here. Just making sure I catch the main surface of the model, already nicely shaded around it with the dark grey. And just rotating around, looking for these little bugs. And there's one just there. Again, just sort of dragging the brush across. Catch that model, and that's about it. And there's another one. They're everywhere. One just here. Okay, once that's done, the Necrons, you can see where uh, the silver spray's gone and it hasn't quite reached the edge there, so I can use the same colour. This is your Iron Breaker. And I'm just going to catch the silver on that leg. Paint it in, and again, should go on easy because it's just a, a mid dark grey undercoat. Um, and then there's the varnish on top of that, so oh, yeah, the paint just goes on really well. I'm just going to complete that nice and neat to the floor. Like so, looking really good. One coat should suffice. The next one, going around behind, and then third and final one. Sort of tripod style walker here. Nice and tidy. You don't want to get it all over your highlights about you've done your stones. Bit just behind. And that's that bit done. So we've, we've tidied up the silver on the model, picked out the silver on the base, done all the highlighting. Next, uh, we'll do some washes uh, just to add a bit of life to this base here. Highlighting, shading's done, but um, we'll add a bit of some washes here and that'll really enhance the base. So a bit of a big brush, got an old base coat brush here. And got Sarah from Sepia wash. And it's just a case of uh, sort of shading in, add a bit of life and interest to this. So right in the cracks and crevices of this ruin, the base of it, I'm gonna put this wash in. Just stab it in around there, you can sort of start seeing it shading in. And then just blotches and patches random places on the ground or around big rocks not across the entire thing just to try and make it look as natural as possible I usually uh, wherever the feet or legs are touching the ground I'll, I'll go around all of that with this you can shade our little scarab friends and if the silver's still wet and it hasn't had time to dry, then it'll start to come off and uh, move across, move around. It's not a good idea, so let that dry totally. I mean, do this. I'm going to go around this rock, a few blotches here and there, different places. Now I'm starting to get an idea of how the base is going to look. Move around to the other side. Shade everywhere. These steel reinforced bits coming up, I'll shade them. Any cracks and crevices on the root. And here we'll 
shade in these little scarab things. This one. And just the uh, cracks of the building and then just blotching it out. So looking something like that. So I'll keep going around just to shade up the rest of this base here, this seraphim step here. Okay, uh, so that shading is pretty much dry. Then after that, if there's any steel work, any metal, then you can make that stronger. Uh, next with Agrax Surf Shade. So I'm going to uh, pick out those bits of steel coming out of the ruin again. And I go on the other side. And just that. And these little scarabs. I'm going to give them another coat. Or a coat of this Agrax. So you've gone from a rusty Seraphim Sepia now to Agrax Surf Shade, which is a nice deep brown shade. And I'll fill in all the gaps and uh, creases it. Get this little scarab, they really pop out from the base. And you can see them clambering away. And that's about it, nothing else really to pick off with that. So that basin is in pretty good shape now. Um, we'll let this dry and then we'll pick out the, uh, the silver, the little scarabs and the reinforced rod coming out of the uh, ruins as well. Alright, so that's dried, as uh, now the silver, so I'm ready to pick that out again. So now I've got a, again, size bomb brush, picking up some of the iron breaker. I'm just going to thin it out a bit on the palette, like take some of it off of the, the brush. And then just going to pick out uh, the steel work. It's just painting them again leaving sort of the shaded areas and then sort of scarabs it should be a case of just dragging the brush across the top of the silver and that'll pick them out and that should be all we need to do and that'll be this base finished and just ready for the flock later on so a scarab there just pick them out one here one here, it's all shaded for you, it's just flicking the brush across the detail uh, for that. And then now the steel work from this side. Pick that up. Same basin technique across the whole army, whatever type of unit you're painting. Uh, but this scarab's picked out, you can see the silver on them. Just reinforce that a little bit. That's that done. So really, the next stage after this, uh, we'll start work on the model itself. Uh, but all we've got left to do on the base now uh, is the flock to add on. That'll add in another shade. So you've got grey, brown, and then green. So you've got some nice colours going on just to make the base uh, come to life a little bit. Better than just plain grey. Uh, you're starting to introduce some other colours. Just try and make it as realistic as possible. The nice little details, these scarabs here. You could super glue on it or use plastic glue stick on a space marine head, for example. Again, paint it silver. Uh, pick it out with one of your colours, blue for example, add a bit of blue to it, then chip and rust it up. Same sort of process, just swap your colours around, just for some battlefield debris. Uh, easily done and a real nice touch, especially if you're HQ units, you know, your special units, you want to take a bit more effort with the base. I usually add a few more accessories to the base just to help make them stand out, but a little bit, a little bit more effort uh, with your special characters and models compared to your regular units. So next, uh, so we'll put some base colours on here. The silver's all done for us, it's all varnished, it's ready for washes to go straight on top, which is a you know, massive stride ahead. Um, so we want to pick out some colours before we come to the washes. So I have a O-size brush with a nice tip, Artist Opus brush here. Um, so we're nice and tied in some crop control. I, I don't want to uh, be making a mess here. So there's this neon glowing uh, gems and sort of mechanical bits here on the model uh, so I'm going to pick some of those out I'll pick a few out here and then I'll paint the rest and then show you where I've put them but um, there's an orb just there see it on his arm so I'm going to neatly pick that out and this green should go on nice onto the silver probably just one coat you need but I'm making sure that with the tip of the brush I'm getting the whole, the, all of the orb not just on top but around the sides so I'm going to tip the model at an angle 
make sure you catch it from all directions, and that's that one picked up. Like so. It's just darker green, <clears throat> but that's your base colour, and then you're, you're going to build up from that to add in your more fluorescent, uh, fluorescent neon sort of colours. There's one just here as well, right on his sort of lines here, his tummy, stomach. So again, just rotating the model just to make sure I catch that, all the angles I need to. Great. And, and then, just looking around, I'm going to reference the box art here and take a look. You've got license to paint as much or as little as you want, but just common sense. Wherever you find these orbs, it's usually the same across the entire Necron range. Uh, you'll soon start to see where to paint. And there's one, just I can see one on the side of his leg here, just tucked in near the pelvis. There's an orb just there as well. I'll go around the whole of the model uh, and paint that up. All right, so we'll go on to the bronze next. Uh, with the green, I've picked out all the orbs. Pretty much the Necron models are virtually uh, the, the same kind of stuff. Even these new models here, uh, you'll find it's the orbs that are these uh, glowing green colour. So, or whichever colour you want, you could switch out to red, blue, orange, uh, whatever glowing colour you want. I love the green, it matches in my current style. Um, so I'm not going to follow the box art here exactly, I'm going to do sort of my own style on it uh, to match in with the rest of the Necron collection that I have. Uh, but uh, picking out all the orbs, the chambers here, the glowing neon bits for the gun, you can see them picked out there. And you can see uh, there's a couple of orbs on the shoulders. Um, it's just common sense really, and then uh, your piping. See it running around? We'll highlight that nicely with some neon effects as well later on uh, running around there. It's not loads and loads, it's majority silver, that's where you're going to save time and then you're adding in some colours uh, that'll uh, create some areas of interest for the whole model uh, and then uh, washes and highlights later on. So next colour, bronze, or this brass kind of colour. Uh, the colour that I use, uh, and again it's to match with my existing Necrons, uh, and that's uh, Hashut Copper. Uh, you can vary that if you wish you can go for more of a bronze color uh, there's a number of shades of this kind of brassy bronze uh, that are available um, so it's entirely up to you uh, but i'm going to use hashtag copper or match him with my existing collection now again the box art and the new sort of style that they've been painting up the necrons uh, is like so so a, a lot of brass a lot of copper around here on the model. I'm going to do less, uh, again, just to match him with the uh, existing collection that I have. But having said that, it's totally up to you. You can do as much or as little as you want. Uh, the idea behind my colour scheme is you know, to look good, but at the same time to save save time by having the majority of the model silver. Um, so uh, I'm not going to paint too much brass here, but it's a lovely colour to add in, not just plain silver, but to add, add in another metallic. Uh, it can look really good for the Necrons, as you can see here. So I'm going to do some copper, brass, bronze, uh, whatever shade you want to do. I'm going to do some of it, you'll see it in a moment. Uh, but you can do as much or as little as you want. This new style, this new style of uh, painting the Necrons does look fantastic, it really does look good. Um, so it's entirely your choice. Uh, just follow the box art here if you want to. Uh, but I'm going to paint some now. So hush up copper, I've got a size one artist opus brush. I do want to be tidy with this, nice and clean. Uh, I'm taking paint straight from the pot. Some people say, well, why do you do that? But I just, I usually maintain the pots as they are, add in some uh, thinners, paint thinner and so on, uh, just to keep it nice, a nice good flow to it. And then you usually just take straight from the pot, don't you usually have a problem. This, uh, copper, hash out copper here, it's not too runny, there's a nice thickness to it because I want the pigment quite strong uh, here. So I reckon I'm going to go for this uh, detail here, this plate, this will shade up quite nicely, shade and highlight quite nicely later on so you can see that one picked up. See how nicely it goes on uh, to the silver? One coat will do. Just thin that down a little bit. Um, 
Yeah, I'll pick out the edge of this. I reckon. Just the edge of that. Obviously going to pick out the other side. This ancient Necron uh, hieroglyphics. Cool. Then usually, just remember my other models, usually um, for like uh, my Necron overlords and so on, these kind of scaly bits are usually painted in the bronze. So I'll paint all of that. Look at that, one coat. Fantastic, that goes on nicely. And it just creates such a nice area of interest for not too much effort at all. It'll be easy to wash and highlight this later on. Very, very easy. Uh, rotate the model around, make sure I catch it from behind here. Work the brush in. I want to work this into all the nooks and crannies neatly. Something like that. Come in another angle. There you And uh, looking around, there's another orb I've missed here on this arm, so I'll need to pick that out. Uh, so maybe this crest bit here. Just to put a bit more onto this model, because you know it's a nice HQ choice and a nice uh, bit of bronze on this one, and just to get it semi matching in with the new start, I'll add some. So these two crests coming up. Obviously, the more you do, the longer you're going to spend at this here, so the less time you'll save. So my colour scheme I don't do too much but then a little bit can look like a lot when it's spread out so you know choose wisely where you want to put the the bronze and in no time at all you'll have a good representation of it on the model just catch it on the inside make sure I catch all my angles here and back and it's coming along well so I'm gonna make some more decisions where I want to put it I'll have a look around I don't want it all run down the middle here I need to put some to the the arms and so on some other areas and then I'll show you where I've been. Alright, so I've already gone on to the next colour here. It's this darker metallic. You can see I've started painting it in. Uh, but with the green I've picked out at any of the orbs, it's pretty much the same uh, running throughout the colour scheme and throughout the Necron range. Even these newer models compared to the older ones, uh, still it's these orbs, this sort of fluorescent neon glowing green. So the base colour for that's this dark colour. So there. Uh, not do the eyes now. Uh, the chamber here for the gun, you can see it. That'll be neon glowing later on. Um, there's orbs just on the shoulders here, on the arms, on the legs, tucked just next to the hip. Uh, and then these pipes running around, or these cables. Pick those out with the green. Just one coat seems to work fine, because we'll, we'll pick that again later. Um, so once that's done, quite close to shading now. Um, so I'm going to pick out an, another type of metallic and for this you want to mix uh, Iron Breaker and Abaddon Black so onto a palette and I'm trying to make a, a dark metallic colour you can see it there on, on camera, pretty good and I, I'm just looking to pick out the same kind of rule as with the bronze not too much of it here, I want the majority of the model to be silver but just introducing another type of metallic colour um, so usually I paint middle of the crest which I've, I've mostly done like so and then I'll, I'll pick out the Necron logo or symbol later on with some neon green don't need to do it now um, and then uh, usually in between the ribs of these uh, different cables and, and piping I usually fill that all in with this colour a little bit to do underneath Something like that. And that pushes that into the background then pulls the ribcage forward. That's the area of interest there. And then those cables just go into the background. Um, and then it's just a case of going around the model. Not too much of it. So, because uh, again, you want the majority of the model to be this silver colour. I'll do a bit to do around, the, around this weapon. A bit around the gun. It's a bit too silver at the moment. Some other areas just here and there. Um, but again, the more of it you paint, the more time it's going to take you. So the idea is to uh, do as little as you need to. So I'll, I'll go around and I'll show you where I've been. Alright, so uh, I've sort of picked out the colours like so. Not too much uh, of the dark metallic colour. So uh, you can see some of the 
part of the handle here on the weapon. Uh, the inner parts, you're really free to choose whatever you want to do, uh, but the inner parts of the chamber of the gun. Just tying that in with the green. And again around the other side, this little ch cartridge of chamber type thing hanging off the end. I've picked that out as well. That's pretty much it, not too much of that one. Again, majority of it's silver. So, uh, once that's dry, you're ready to start with washes. A series of washes we're going to put onto this model just to enhance and then shade uh, the different colours and then we'll bring that back up again with some highlights and special effects just to really lift this model here. We're doing really well, base is virtually done, base colours in position. So almost kind of tabletop, some washes are really start to enhance the model here. So, uh, back to the Seraphim Sepia again. I've got a base brush here, it's just got a sort of a triangular tip to it, it's got a bit more control because I don't really want to spill this onto other parts of the model. I just want to shade my brassy bronze areas of this wash. So just apply it on, working it into all the crevices because I really want to shade this properly. And I'll shade on something like that. So that really brings the brown out there. Nice rusty colour flowing in. Same around the chest, and now all those really detailed Necron glyphs here. Flow that into that. You can see the difference between the two. So, brilliantly sculpted. The uh, wash just flows in really, really nice. It really helps to separate it away from the silver even further, onto there, up around from this side, and then the inside, you really have this is filling in and shading in here, and then there's these other bits, flows in nicely, must remember the back part here, of this bit dangling down, just flowing it in nicely. So I go around the rest of the uh, brass and bronze there, just picking it out nice and quickly. All right, so uh, that's just drying off. It's not even quite dry. I'm going to immediately go on to the next shade because it's it's on the rest of the metallics here. So if I'm careful, I can just avoid uh, the brass shading as it dries off. Uh, but making good progress now. We'll go on to non oil. So this is really like your, your black wash, in a way there's no other colour in it really. Um, and that's just to give a nice strong shade to all your uh, silver uh, across here. So I try and avoid the brass, but you do want to be shading your green, so that can be shaded uh, with this. So I've got quite a big brush here, it's a shade brush. And looking to flow that around. I don't want to go over this blade here, we'll work on that with some neon colours later on. So I'll, I'll maybe catch the top of it but not go any further than that onto the blade itself. And I'm just going to work this in. I'm using a larger brush because I want to save time. A larger brush will save you a lot of time. Because your covering area is a lot quicker. It's all the legs here. Sort of semi-stabbing the brush to try and work the wash into all the nooks and crannies to shade it. You can see a difference already, see? Just plain silver, and then the wash going on. Then just using the brush to soak up any puddles, where there's too much of it. Making sure I flow it into all the nooks and crannies here. It's worth getting it right at this stage. I think I could just about do it with this brush. I can always use another brush later on to try and get into even tighter areas. That's going on quite nicely. Working on this leg. All the way down to the start of the base. Yeah, quite happy with that. Shading up quite nice. Working around. Linking up with where I've already been. And then just 
Make sure those orbs are nicely filled in. Nice and dark with this colour, shaded well. On the third leg at the back now. So making pretty fast progress just with the size of the brush. Just methodically going around and then back around to the first leg here. It's getting the lower half done. I'll press on here, pretty straightforward. Don't forget to shade all your green as well and then uh, we'll take a look when this is done. All right, so it's dry now, looking something like that. I haven't touched the blade yet. We'll, we'll, we'll do some special effects now a bit later on. So once that's completely dry, and you've got to let it dry in all the nooks and crannies, um, it's Agrax Earth shade. So now it's a shade, another darker shade, but it's some brown in this one. Um, so it's going to add a little bit of a, a weathered effect here onto your silver. Uh, and then also it's going to add deep shade here to your bronze, brass, uh, and then also to your green areas as well. So really, the entire model now, all of it, apart from this blade, all of it's uh, going to be Agrax Earth, Earth Shade. So again, I'm going to use a big shade brush here. Soak up some of the wash. And you can see it will strengthen the brass and bronze. And then it will slightly rust and weather up the metallic as well. So there it is done. Not done. Just brings it to life a little bit. Because these are meant to be old ancient machines so they're not going to be factory fresh you know they've been in the catacombs for thousands of years not longer so they're gonna look old and weathered not total rust heaps though <laughs> just sort of a, a balance you're looking for so that's flowing in nicely shading in well Something like that. Soak up some more, do this claw here and all the cabling underneath. But uh, using this brush just to shade it all up. I'll show you on top here. So just catching the, the blades and then working it into all the nooks and crannies. Something like that. Real good shading going on now with this. This is the last shade metallic work so I guess if you stopped at this point you know you'd be sort of tabletop kind of standard you get away with that on the tabletop no problem but it really is conti worth continuing on would encourage you to press on to the the final stages you can really enhance the model make it stand out without too much effort really it's not too much effort to uh, do the next stage I'm going to shade in the head and then working the brush right into the neck to make sure I can get as deep as I can with the shading. Again, flowing into the rib cage. Just to shade that in. But uh, I'll press on here, quite straightforward. Just going to take my time, making sure I work the brush into all the nooks and crannies. And then just, again, using the brush to collect any puddles as well, I don't want any puddles building up of excess wash. We're just uh, working my way around like so. I'll keep going and finish this shading off. Alright, so look at something like this now. Shaded nicely. What I want to do is uh, work on this blade. We've left it plain here, so uh, we'll make a start on that. The result I'm looking for is something like this just here. I think it's quicker and easier than the box art. By all means you can copy the box art if you want but it's a fair bit of effort. This is quite quick uh, this approach and it still has that neon blade cutting edge to it. I think it looks quite nice. Similar kind of style to my Triarch Praetorians. It seems to have worked quite well across my Necron army. So I'll show you how to do that a bit next on here. So simply uh, taking uh, the Moot Green and so painting all the blade of that colour, it's just the cutting half of it, it is split along here so you can see a line uh, where you have to paint up to. And I want to paint neatly up to that line. Not the end of the world if it's not too neat, you can correct it later on. Uh, but again, this colour goes on quickly and nicely onto the silver. 
So, that's that dump. Flip it around. I'm skimming along the top. I'm not actually shading in or filling in uh, the Necron Star cracks here. Just skimming over the top. Don't really need to fill them in. Catching the top of the blade. Underside of the blade. And then that's virtually dry there already. So I'm going to just second coat that. Sort of tack dry it so if I'm careful. I can just put a second coat on. Like so. Already, I mean, what a focal point. Really is worth making the effort with this blade. It's like a trademark weapon. And the other side, just like it a bit more solid. Make it pop out a bit more. Something like that. And when it's dry, uh, we're going to put a wash uh, on this blade next. Okay, so it's BL10 green. Uh, I've got a shade brush here. And looking to shade the whole of the blade. So it's the green bit you've done plus the silver behind. This neon effect is, is uh, affecting the whole of the blade here. And I'm washing it into all the cracks this time. This flows on nicely and evenly because you've already pre-varnished this. Now, that's really helped. And then, just making sure I fill in all the cracks and crevices, but look at that. Looking nice already. And again, it's sort of tabletop standard already, but you can press on here. Just sort of my own method I came up with, which was, turned out quite quick, but still looking for that really cool effect. Black at uh, the back of the blade, top of the blade. Just using the bristles of the brush to do long, nice long strokes to pick up any spare. I don't need two deep puddles on this, but a bit of shading is okay. So looking something like that. Then when that's dry, uh, I guess there's no harm pushing on with it. We'll do this all in one. So we'll, we'll push on to the next stage with this. Let us dry it, and then we'll go on to uh, the next step. All right, next is Rune Fang Steel. So we're going to uh, lighten up the silvery part here. It's got a shade of green on it, but we want to lighten that up. So I'm catching, uh, catching the edges. Give them a nice crisp finish. Just using the side of the brush. I'll zoom in a little bit here. So that you can see what's going on. Just swapped out to a finer tip brush. Just wanted to bring this up. The colour of it. I'm going to pick out this sharp line running down. This split between silver and green. We'll pick this out with the green as well. And I'm just looking to fill it in and leave a tiny hint of the green shading. Just tidying it up, trying to make it look as sharp, as crisp as possible. See the glint of it. Tidying up the back of the blade. Looking good. Front face of the blade. And then just in there. Top of the blade, tip. Then around the other side. So just tidying up. Right. Just fill in that in a little bit. Try to create this neon glowing effect. New line. Something like that, it's the hint of that green. And I'll take a look at that. Just tighten up the highlighting, make it look nice and 
crisp and tidy. So that's that bit done. Just lightens that up like a glistening blade effect that you're after. Uh, and then we're back onto the moot green. So then you're taking that, and now you're painting your edges, and you've got a nice shade of green going on here. So what you should find, again, just trying to get a nice tip with the brush. You can use your thumbs palette. And I'm just going to catch the end of these. There'll be a final highlight after this. Uh, I want to catch my central edge. And it's quite a broad highlight this one because a very sharp edge can be done a bit later on with your final highlight colour. Trying to lift that a little bit, so we're getting the idea of what's going on, and then catching my edges, just picking out something like that. The final edge is to come. It'll be the. Uh, this mixed of the white scut, moot green. So I'm just preparing for that by just doing some brush strokes here to strengthen the green. Run the brush down this line and this line. catch these edges like that. So it's all nice and tidied up, leaving some shaded areas and then uh, just run the brush down just to enhance and strengthen that moot green. Next stage about 50-50 moot green and the uh, scar white or white scar. Right so what you're mixing is uh, mo your moot green, white scar, so you're going to colour like that and then a tiny dot of uh, flesh gets yellow just to give it a little bit of a warmer feel to it. And that's the kind of colour you're looking for. And now I, I thin that out with a bit of water. Now you're trying to catch your neat edge. So one thing you can do is run the brush sideways down the very cutting edge. That's easy to do. And this colour actually can be a little bit brighter. So more white scar. So now you can see that cutting edge being highlighted. Okay. It's a good flow, good tip on this brush. And it's looking quite sharp. Then uh, neatly you want to catch the dividing line of this blade here. Like so. Use the brush at an angle. Yeah. Yeah, on top. Yeah, that's got a nice neon effect now. So I can go around all of these. This is well worth two. There, that's really starting to pop out now. Yeah, looking nice. Now 
So just picking that up. There, I've actually worked my way all the way down. If you really want to, you can up your highlight to an extreme colour and then you can pick off pick out the very tips. You don't have to do this, but just to pick this out even more, so all the very extreme corners can be picked out with a final extreme highlight, we don't really need it. I'll add it in. Just on the corner of the blade here. Something like that. So there it is. I'm happy enough with that. It looks that stands out really does stand out nicely. And when the rest of the model starts to be highlighted, it should look really good. So Coming up well, so that's that blade done. I'll do the other side and then that blade will be finished uh, and then we'll get back to the main part of the, the model here. All right, so, look at something like that. Happy enough that it's come out. Uh, brass then. So you're taking your original color, hash up copper, and you're looking to go about 50-50 with the rune fang steel to create your highlight color. So I'm putting it onto a palette. Gonna lift some of the rune fang steel. Mix them together. You're trying to make a silvery version of the hashuck copper, and I'm quite happy with how that's coming out. So just taking the excess off the brush, and it's just a case of dragging the brush across the top of the copper, being careful not to fill in the the details, but just to drag it across. And it's that quick. That's your highlight. So I'm going to catch the edge of this. Just skim across the top of these glyphs, very, very quick, like so. With the armour, I'm not trying to repaint the armour, I'm just dragging the brush across and catching the highlighting edges here. So, leaving the rest as a shade. Something like that, it's pretty fast. And here. Seeing that going on and catching the side, and the back, on top, see that nicely, the, the shade's doing its job, nice depth to it now, and then we're just highlighting of this mix uh, and then just keep going so uh, the back of the thing here between his legs just there and these little bits just flick the brush across and down here on the blade can I overload this and top of a nice bit on down here, on the tip of the edge of the blade. Really lightens the whole thing up and very, very, very quick. Straight forwards. Dun, 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 and dun. And uh, the end of it here. Just tucked in there. And there's a great highlight for a couple of the factions, Xenos factions that I have, I, I use this technique. And uh, get great results with it. Uh, a little bit under the arm. Let me catch the edge of this. And then just looking around, this has gone on quite quickly. I think that's pretty much it. Yep, so that's your, yes, your brass done. And again, I I've, haven't done too much brass here on this model, and so this process has been quite quick. But let's pick that out. It gives a nice depth to the model. Uh, next then, I think really the silver. So uh, we'll pick out the silver next then. And the key with this is not to repaint the whole thing. It's just you're catching uh, your edges and your main sort of panelled areas. Uh, well, you'll see. We'll go on to this next. 
So I've got a, a base coat brush here. Different one is a bit more bristles to this one. Um, so I'm taking the iron breaker and I've got Rune Fang steel on, on standby. Use that. It's optional, you don't have to, but as your final extreme highlight. But so iron breaker, get on the palette just to control the amount of paint on your brush. So load it up, but not too much. And I'm just going to run, see if I can show you on this leg. I'm just going to almost flick the brush across the top of the model. And I'm just catching, letting the brush naturally catch the detail. I'm going to catch this slightly larger pan on his leg. Leave all the shading in between. Then onto his fire. Flick the brush across, naturally pick out that panel. Tuck the brush in there and catch a little bit of the edge on the pelvis. And then onto the next leg. So you see how quickly I'm moving. I'm not really repainting the entire thing. I'm just skimming the brush across the, the natural bits to, to pick out here. I'll do a little bit more just to show you. So here's another edge. And you can leave this, you can do a very light highlight and leave it grimier if you want to. But I'm just gonna flick that across that picks that out. Look at all the shading done for you and a slight bit of rust. We're going to add a little bit more rust to this as well uh, after this. Back of the fire and then I'm going to speed up sort of my normal speed here. Because these are Necrons. You can crack out an army with this technique pretty quick and still get some great results I think. So working way round. And if you miss a bit, wouldn't really notice if you'd missed a bit with this. Just see a great thing about it, and then down the side. That's virtually the lower half done. Pick a bit out on here, here, and we've got ourselves a painted lower half now. So looking something like that. a bit more so we'll, we'll move up onto the arms here just catch them catch the top of the arm onto the blade catching a bit of that it's like a controlled dry brush but it's it's not really a dry brush as such but just you're sort of a skimming across the detail here nice and neat up to the edge of the rib cage that's uh, picked out nicely. And the face, just giving the brush across the top. So it's just lifting that up now. Something like that. I'll go around the rest of the model. Um, with your Rune Fang steel, this is optional. When you're finished, you can take your, your lighter shade of, of steel here. And then your extreme edges. So things like the, the tips of any sharp weapons can be picked out with a stronger silver. Something like that. You need your sharp blade edges, things like that. If you really want that to, to stick out. But again, I'm just doing the, the real tips here, not doing the whole length of the blade. Something like that. Uh, and then once you've highlighted along here, you know, your edges like this can be picked out with the, with the Rune Fang steel as well. So I'll, I'll go ahead and do all of that around the whole of the model and uh, that's a significant step forward. Okay, so looking at something like that, I mean he's, he's getting close to finishing here but uh, very happy with how this has turned out. Nicely weathered now with the silver. Not quite finished with it yet. There's a further effect you can add in. I, I wouldn't go too over the top with this but a little bit of rust. So Seraphim Sepia, back to this colour again and this time taking Got an brush here, Artis Opus, quite fine. And I'll just use that to introduce a little bit of rust. Just in patches, like in the joints. And we haven't used this colour yet. So you can introduce this a little bit. I'll just run it in the joints. And then with the new models here, you get these uh, dents in the armour where you can fill those up and even run a little bit of the rust out from them as well. Not too much, we're just working a little bit in just to rust him up a little bit. A 
little bit on the side of the skull and around the neck. I think it's worth doing under the shoulder blades. And in the joints here, shoulder joint, elbow joint. Yeah, it just rusts them up a little bit. But again, I wouldn't go too over the top with this. A little bit around the start of the blade set. Then on top, see the top of his arm? We're on a bit in these cracks to introduce a little bit of rust. Like so. So again, I'll run around and, and do that there across the rest of the model. Right, so that's the rust applied. And all the way around, you can see on the shoulder it's still drying off here. I've applied a few sort of puddles of it here, just some pot marks of rust. And here. The great thing is the new Necron models have these pits and, and scratches and damage applied to them. Which is excellent, so you can fill those in with the rust. Looks something like that. Okay, so the neon orbs and so on. I'll pick out the one in the middle of the stomach here so you can see. First thing, uh, repaint the warp stone glow. So I'm sort of stabbing the brush here. And then leaving some shaded area. Something like that. Uh, then you're taking your moot green. And you can wait till it dries or even if it's still wet and I'm just starting to again stab it in. So you can semi blend it when it's wet. But you don't have to, you can um, blend it or water down the moot green, doesn't matter which way around you do it. And then more moot green to lift it up. And each time you're retreating uh, inwards. So you're going out further with warp stone glow, then you're coming in a bit. Uh, with the moot green and then in a bit for the final highlight here and that'll be the same highlight you used uh, on the blade edge so that's going to be a little bit of flash gets yellow small bit white scar mixed with your moot green uh, so we'll do this now so moot green white scar and a dollop the flash gets yellow just mixing this up on the palette. Okay, and then for this one, try not to go solid. It's like a, you're trying to create a murky kind of look, so it's just leaving gaps sort of in between, and it gives you that kind of effect. Just that. So, one other thing to show you would be the cables. So we'll pick on a cable here at the back, so this length here. So uh, tidy up and neaten up with your, and repaint with your warp stone glow. So just tidies the whole thing up. I haven't done any of these, anything to these since the start uh, of the tutorial here. I'll pick out a few of the others. Right. And then after that same process, taking your moot green. This is still dry, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so starting at the connecting point there, and then I'm just going to fade this out like so. And again, it's sort of an easy way to do it. A connecting point just here, stronger. Fade it out to nothing. And just going to pick on this end. Make it stronger. Very straightforward way of picking out a highlight here. And then a connecting point at this end. So getting some nice tones going, some nice shading taking place. Um, and maybe a little bit of that mix just to finish off. You don't have to. Bit there. Bit there. That's your cables picked out. And again, very easy, but look, look at the way it pops out here. Nice. Okay, so I'll go around the rest of the model, uh, doing the orbs and the uh, cables, uh, just like I've, I've shown you. So we'll press on. Look at the way that pops out. It's, it's worth doing, I think. Okay, so 
uh, look at something like this. It really helps them uh, stand out. Not too much effort to do. So you can see the chamber of the gun stands out nicely now. Uh, I've used that colour and extreme highlight on the chest there, picking out that Necron symbol. You don't have to, you could have, I could have left it brass, but uh, I wanted to pick that out. Just there, and then you can see the cabling and the orbs here on top. On top of the arm, and then the cabling. Nice feature, easy to do. So, that's the painting finished, really. Uh, now it's just the basing. So it's already been highlighted and washed and so on. Uh, just a bit of flock to add now. So I've got my flock just here. And taking an old brush and some PVA glue. Put the PVA glue onto the palette. Then as much or as little as you want. I just do some, try to resist doing too much. Got the brush sideways here. And I'm just gonna randomly run it in patches here. Through the gap, we'll go right up to the edge here. If, it's, uh, if there's a damaged area where sand has, has come off or a stone's fallen off, then just patch that in with the glue. I'm gonna put a little bit up on top of this ruin here, a little bit. And around the other side, and some in there. And that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to take the model, put it into the pot, just flick the flock across. Tap sideways, save as much as you can, and then just gently. Blow off the excess, like so. A little bit's gone onto the silver here. So I'll use a brush that's dry. Yeah, it's a case of finding one here. It is this one. And then just flicking off that because I'm going to give this a coat of varnish. I don't want to be varnishing on the flock to this, but give that a tidy up. Brush that spare flock away. Like so, and then you're ready for uh, your varnishing. So, uh, Munitor and varnish, spray it. Uh, not too heavy, you don't want to go too, this is metallics here, so you want to go for heavy coats, you can make the model frost up. I don't think it's much to get frosting here, but if you go too heavy uh, with Munitor and varnish, it goes very glossy, I don't really want that. So it's very light spray, almost as if you, you feel that no spray has actually gone onto the model, it's just light spraying, going all the way around. Uh, that'll seal the whole thing and protect it, and then your model's finished looking at something like that. That process is it's pretty quick and you can get results like so. Alright, so just giving that a light spray, that sealed the whole thing in and the model is finished. So there he is, done. This exact process that you see here can be applied to all the Necron units, uh, vehicles and so on. Same process, same colour scheme, same uh, washes, and highlighting and techniques of the uh, moot green and the brass and so on can be used here. But there it is, finished up. Keep a look out for more painting tutorials on the channel. Check out the previous ones. There is an older painting tutorial for the Necrons and you'll see it's pretty much the same process that you see here. Uh, but now uh, there's one I've been able to fully update uh, with the brand new uh, models. There it is. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.